Right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, uh, so, Karode wanted me to uh, talk about uh, the new ATS IDSA guidelines or an update uh, from 2005 on uh, uh, HAP and uh, WAP. Uh, so, the objectives, uh, we're going to examine the evidence behind the term HCAP uh, uh, and the rationale for its removal from this guideline. Uh, to review the evidence uh, and current recommendation of specific diagnostic tools in HAP and WAP. And uh, we'll be shocked to see that uh, what we, we don't have to do complicated stuff, just simple stuff is good enough, uh, is the final message. Uh, to determine whether antimicrobial activity against MRSA or Pseudomonas is warranted based on the presence of what risk factors for NDR uh, organisms. To review the evidence behind the updated recommendation and duration of therapy for HAP and WAP. So, definitions. Hospital acquired pneumonia, HAP. Pneumonia occurring more than 48 hours after admission and not present at admission. Ventilator shared pneumonia is pneumonia developing 48 hours after endotracheal intubation. So, it's pretty straightforward. What about HCAP? Pneumonia that occurs in a patient with extensive healthcare contact. Uh, uh, one or more of the following. So it's sort of very broad. And that definition has really not changed much. So if you have been exposed to IV therapy, wound care, uh, IV chemotherapy within the past 30 days, residence in a nursing home or a long-term facility, hospitalization in an acute care uh, hospital for two days or more uh, within the last 90 days, and attendance at a dialysis clinic in the past 30 days. So it's pretty broad. So you're constantly getting exposed to healthcare system, then you, uh, you can consider HCAP when you come in with pneumonia in that setting. Mm. So uh, let's briefly go, uh, we'll go to uh, the impact of HAP and WAP, and then we'll talk more about why HCAP was taken out of the guidelines. So you look at H uh, uh, HAP or WAP, uh, uh, they account for at least 22% of all hospital-acquired infections. And approximately 10% of patients requiring mechanical ventilation will develop have WAP, and, uh, which will prolong the hospitalization by an extra close to two weeks. And HAP alone is associated with an overall mortality rate as high as 27 to 51% in various studies. So it's an important, uh, it, uh, and then there is obviously monetary impacts, uh, length of stay impacts, all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, Okay, good. So, if you look at the guidelines, uh, uh, there are, what were the changes from 2005 uh, uh, guidelines? So, they used a slightly different uh, grading methodology. Uh, uh, we'll talk about it briefly. Uh, they removed HCAP uh, from the guidelines. They addressed the use of specific diagnostic tools. How do you test for microbiology? They, uh, there is an emphasis on the use of antibiogram-based uh, therapies. And the duration of their treatment is different. It's, it's lower. And, the risk, uh, and when do you consider MDROs? What are the risk factors for MDROs? And then uh, 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 the update is going to align recommendation between IDSA and ATS. An ATS publication is going to come, I believe, in summer of 2017. So if you look at the grading methodology, this is uh, some sort of a standard grading uh, things. And they uh, uh, based on how good the study, if it's a randomized controlled study, if it is, uh, uh, how, what is the impact of the study, uh, and how well it's done, how it's blinded, everything has a score to it. And based on the different scores, uh, they, uh, uh, they grade it into strong and weak recommendations. Uh, 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 and uh, for patients, it, uh, strong is obviously significantly beneficial. Mm, uh, uh, for clinicians, uh, uh, they will always adhere, and policymakers make it into a policy. So weak is exact opposite of that. Uh, so that's what a great methodology. It's a very detailed uh, grading scoring system. So that's what was used in this uh, uh, guidelines. All right. Now, why was HCAP taken out uh, of the uh, 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 of uh, the guidelines? So, if you look at an uh, original paper, uh, uh, this was published in Chess in 2005. Uh, Kolef uh, uh, conducted a large retrospective study that found HCAP was associated uh, with, uh, and HCAP, in that study, the definition of HCAP uh, was anybody uh, who came into the hospital with, a pneumo uh, uh, with pneumonia and uh, hospitalization in the past three months, hemodialysis or from a nursing facility. Those were the three things used in the definition. And he found in the retrospective study, uh, uh, there is a higher MRSA rate, 26.5% compared, to, uh, uh, compared uh, to, uh, to, uh, to CAP uh, when they come in with pneumonia, <coughs> a higher pseudomonas rates, uh, and higher mortality rates, and the uh, length of stay was longer. So all this seemed to be pretty significant. 
Then there was further studies which, uh, uh, which showed 28% of uh, patients defined as HCAP received inappropriate initial antibiotic uh, uh, therapy uh, uh, and uh, they failed to target the infecting pathogen. And some of the pathogens they missed seemed to be Pseudomonas aeruginosa, MRSA and Acinodobacter. So it seemed, uh, so the studies uh, were in interpreted as HCAP patients may be associated with excess mortality rate due to high frequency of resistant pathogens uh, not covered by initial empiric antibiotics. Therefore, suggested use of empiric broad spectrum antibiotics from day one mm, mm, for HCAP diagnosis was made. Uh, 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 but that is not completely true. That's old data. Uh, the, the newer studies were not able to consistently replicate the higher mortality or the increased risk of MDROs uh, in HCAP, uh, which was, was significantly confounded by publication bias. Uh, so none of that was true. Uh, neither the mortality nor the uh, uh, MDROs were uh, uh, in uh, HCAP. So, uh, uh, so the emerging evidence is the, the, uh, they did a systemic review uh, uh, of 24 studies, about 22,000 patients, uh, compared frequency of resistant pathogens, including uh, uh, MRSA, resistant enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, in HCAP versus uh, CAP. Uh, uh, and they realized the increased risk of MDROs in HCAP was significantly confounded by publication bias. The discriminatory ability of HCAP for MDROs was actually low, not high, uh, and especially in high quality and prospective search. If you look at good studies, there was uh, HCAP and CAP were identical in terms of diagnosed pathogens, and uh, they were not MDROs. Uh, and if you adjust for age and comorbidities, the mortality rate was not increased in HCAP period. Okay, so, so neither the uh, mortality rate increased nor that there was increased risk of MDROs in HCAP. So which is why HCAP was taken out of the, mm, uh, uh, out of the uh, uh, guidelines at this point of time. So at this, but we know these are people who come from healthcare exposure. So you have to have certain, you have to have some sort of discrimination. So in certain patients, you may want to do uh, uh, coverage for MDROs. So when do you... Uh, 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 what do you do? Uh, what do you do? So, uh, in a large retrospective study, MDROs not associated with HCAP classification. Uh, the uh, uh, odds ratio was 2.95, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and with the individual components uh, uh, such as uh, home infusion, home wound care, greater than 40 days of hospitalization in prior 90 days, all of this, nothing really mattered. But if you have independent, what are the independent predictor risk factors for MDROs uh, in if HCAP diagnosis at this point of time? Is uh, if there is prior pseudomonal colonization or infection in the past year, they're documented prior, such as people who have structural lung disease, for example, so say cystic fibrosis or something like that. If you, if you have antimicrobial use in the previous 90 days for uh, uh, any reason, that might promote you for an MDROs. Admission to a nursing home and duration of hospitalization in the previous uh, uh, 90 to 180 days. So it sort of narrowed it down a little bit, but not significantly yet. It's still, uh, uh, still a messy diagnosis at this point. Mm. So uh, now, moving on to the crux of the guidelines. How do you diagnose HCAP and VAP? So traditionally, we said we need to get the specimen from the lung uh, uh, and not from, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, the upper airways and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, the microbi uh, microbial, uh, microbiologic methods are suggestive uh, 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 non-invasive sampling with semi-quantitative cultures seem to do pretty damn good. So, which means if it's a VAP, just a simple endotracheal aspiration seemed to do very good in multiple studies they've actually shown. So, you do not need a full-blown BAL uh, 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 is the message. So, in 2008, Cochrane uh, uh, review five randomized controlled trials compared, compared invasive uh, with quantitative cultures and non-invasive sampling with semi-quantitative uh, or quantitative cultures. There was no significant difference in the clinical outcome, uh, such as 20 day, 28 day, like for one month mortality, Overall mortality, length of ICU stay, duration of mechanical ventilation, or antibiotic coverage. So it's pretty darn significant. Uh, so we don't necessarily have to do a full blown, uh, uh, full blown. So, so normally we say tracheal aspirate, it's superficial colonization. We don't know what it means. We need a full this one. Uh, but we ourselves are learning, saying that it really does not impact uh, the overall management strategy. So obviously, you guys know better. Uh, sampling for microbiology, if it's invasive, it's BAL or a protective specimen uh, or a blind bronchial uh, mini BAL. Uh, Non-invasive uh, is just endotracheal aspiration. Uh, and you can look for just presence or absence of pathogenic germs in culture, uh, uh, described as light, moderate, heavy growth. Uh, or you can do quantitative version of it uh, uh, at this point, which, uh, which we, we do in our, our center. 
So what about the key, this is the next important thing. What about the use of biomarkers or uh, a biomarker-like score, clinical pneumonia infection score, CTI score for diagnosing of uh, HCAP or VAP. Mm, uh, so the, uh, but what is the bottom line? The bottom line is the recommended use is clinical criteria alone. So if the patient has increased secretions, there is uh, a fever, increased secretion, leukocytosis with an infiltrate uh, in the setting of uh, a healthcare setting or, and or intubated setting, that you will make a diagnosis clinically uh, uh, and then you will decide uh, whether to initiate antibiotics or not. Uh, there is absolutely no data at this point of time that supports an overwhelming support. There is some, some uh, support but not overwhelming support towards use of procalcitonin towards the favoring the diagnosis. Procalcitonin has some other role, but not favoring the diagnosis. Or another alternative uh, 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 biomarker, such as soluble triggering receptor expressed in myeloid cells, STREM1, mm, uh, or CRP, or the, uh, or the CPIS code. So uh, if you look at biomarkers, yeah, clearly uh, uh, procalcitonin starts uh, within a few hours and starts going up. Uh, uh, but at the end of the uh, end of the day, uh, if you look at procalcitonin, uh, 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 peptide precursor of calcitonin that constitutely uh, uh, released by thyroid glands and lungs. It is undetectable in healthy individuals, but is rapidly produced when stimulated by endotoxins such as bacterial infections. May, but it also uh, uh, responds to sterile inflammation or viral infection, uh, even though it's a little bit uh, less common. Uh, so there is today there is no studies that examine clinical outcomes after initiating antibiotics based on procalcitonin for suspected uh, uh, HCAP. So you don't have serial procalcitonin monitoring after you initiated antibiotics uh, to say procalcitonin help me guide the duration of antibiotics or help me guide something. Unfortunately, we don't have any study like that. Mm, uh, uh, but there is a meta-analysis of six studies to explore performance characteristic of uh, uh, serum procalcitonin that diagnosis before you initiated antibiotics, diagnosis of HCAP and WAP. Mm, uh, but the problem there was the, the threshold varied all over the place. There was no significant cutoff. It varied from 0.5 to 3.9 nanograms. And the optimal uh, procalcitonin uh, diagnostic threshold depends on severity, clinical setting, and assay. So we could not say, okay, if the procalcitonin goes up beyond this point, that is when the, uh, that's when you got to make a diagnosis of, the, uh, of a HCAP or WAP, or a HAP or WAP. But so unfortunately, uh, we are not able to say. So when they looked at uh, different... Uh, uh, procalcitonin along with the clinical criteria uh, to, uh, uh, the, uh, to see if we can diagnose HCAP or, uh, or HAP or WAP. Uh, the sensitivity was only 67%, specificity was 83%. So uh, for IDSA panel to include uh, 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 a test, uh, uh, they want a sensitivity of at least 90% uh, or a specificity of 90%, so they failed to include this in the uh, uh, guidelines. So some role, but not a definitive role. Mm, uh, same with the uh, uh, other agent, the STREM1. Uh, it's an immunoglobulin expressed on neutrophils and monocytes infiltrating tissues invaded by bacteria and fungi. Uh, uh, and it's uh, 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 unclear uh, 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 role in, because several studies suggest that it may be elevated in non-infectious inflammation. So similar to uh, procalcitonin, there's no studies available that explores clinical outcomes in, uh, in, uh, in HAP or WAP. Uh, uh, and, uh, but they uh, instead examine performance uh, for diagnosing uh, HAPRWAP, just like procalcitonin, that's the kind of test that was done. And once again, the sensitivity was 84% and specificity of, of uh, only 49%. So that was not included as well. What about CRP? It's a non-specific marker of inflammation uh, synthesized by liver uh, in response to uh, 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 factors uh, released by macrophages or adipocytes. Uh, there are at least three studies that evaluated the ability of CRP to identify patients with VAP. None were able to distinguish between patients with or without VAP. So not so good. Definitely not so good. What about the CPI score? It's, an, it's just a clinical score uh, uh, involving different uh, parameters such as temperature, WBC, PaO2 slash FaO2 ratio, something like that, uh, to assist in deciding whether to initiate antibiotics for suspected WAP. Mm -hmm. The CPI score, if it's greater than 6 at baseline uh, or 72 hours, was considered suggestive of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. uh, but the meta-analysis performance characteristics was uh, sensitivity 65%. Specificity 64%, uh, so did not meet the IDSA guidelines. So literally, we don't have good biomarker scores uh, to uh, to use it significantly uh, uh, to rule in to rule in disease at this point of time. To rule out calcitonin does play a role, uh, procalcitonin does play a role, but to rule in disease, we do not have a good uh, uh, tool at this point of time yet. 
So we just talked briefly about the risk factors for MD, uh, 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 MDROs. Uh, uh, so if uh, 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 risk factors for MDR VAP would be prior intravenous antibiotic use, septic shock at the time of VAP, ARDS preceding VAP, uh, if you have five or more hospitalization prior to uh, occurrence of VAP, acute renal replacement therapy, uh, uh, for MDR HAP, uh, prior intravenous antibiotic use, uh, uh, for MRSA, prior intravenous antibiotic use, for Pseudomonas, prior intravenous antibiotic use. So prior intravenous antibiotic use plays a significant role uh, in determining risk of uh, uh, MDR use. So if they, have, if they were in the hospital or whatever previous admission, they, 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 they had significant antibiotic exposure, and then obviously you consider uh, 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 MDR organisms or you at least suspect MDR organisms. So the uh, prior antibiotic use uh, uh, most significantly associated with both MDROs, uh, which is MRSA and Pseudomonas, uh, 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 and both for HAP and VAP. And the odds ratio was pretty high, 5.17, uh, and uh, or uh, for VAP it is 12.3. So it's pretty significant. Mm, uh, uh, and risk factors for MDROs, uh, HAP was uh, 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 rarely studied. Other risk factors may be relevant, uh, but we don't we don't have good data at this point of time. Mm, uh, so, uh, for example, other risk factors for MRSA, uh, such as known colonization, which uh, that could be a risk factor, obviously, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa and like cystic fibrosis, but there's not enough published evidence, and the, there is uh, mixed quality and mixed findings at this point of time. So, uh, and it's, uh, uh, we know it is important to initiate appropriate antibiotic very early in the game when it comes to diagnosis. Uh, and uh, why does it matter uh, is because uh, if you don't initiate appropriate diagnosis, the hospital mortality, uh, 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 whether it's infection-related mortality or hospital-related mortality, if it's inadequate, uh, it's pretty high, at least in this study, uh, uh, compared to infection-related mortality, it's fairly high compared to use of appropriate antibiotics. Uh, so that's important to uh, guess the right antibiotic when we use. So in suspected H and HAP or WAP, Recommended coverage for staph aureus pseudomonas aeruginosa is generally recommended because most of the time that is what we do. So we are not pretty far off uh, uh, in what we are doing, generally speaking, uh, uh, in our ICU settings mm, uh, 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 and other grand negative bacilli in empiric regimens. So when do you consider MRSA coverage? Uh, uh, the important point is use of IV antibiotics in the past 90 days. Uh, uh, if, it is, uh, if it's, H, uh, it's HAP or VAP, the use of antibiotics is the thing. And, the, uh, and if you know your antibiogram, uh, if there is a colonization in your uh, unit, uh, uh, a rate of at least 20, 10 to 20%, depends on uh, this one. If it's VAP, it is just a lower colonization is good enough. It's HAP, they want a higher colonization of at least 20%. If it's there, then you want to empirically cover for uh, 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 MRSA. So if, uh, or uh, you just don't know, but there's, you know that overall the uh, MRSA prevalence seems to be higher. It's just general opinion. Then you may want to consider that as well. What about one anti-pseudomonal agent? And uh, compared to, say, two anti-pseudomonal agents as an empiric therapy initially. Uh, so uh, uh, pretty much all of the same risk factors like uh, below. Uh, 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 so in, uh, in BAP, if the, uh, in ICU, where 10% or less of gram-negative isolates are resistant, uh, for, uh, resistant to monotherapy. So if it's a very small number of isolates, if you know your antibiogram, and only a small number of isolates, which is 10% or less, are resistant to, a, uh, uh, to monotherapy, then you can actually use single agent, because 90% of the time you'll be good. Mm, uh, so that is why it's fun. Whereas dual agents, the predominant reason for use of dual agents, the, 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 the data on dual agent is pretty weak. So we rarely use dual agents mm, uh, for anti-pseudomonal on an empiric basis. But when they are shocky, when they are shocky, or if they know that they have uh, known structural colonization with multi-drug organisms such as cystic fibrosis, then we use. Mm, then we use. Otherwise, when do you choose uh, anti-pseudomonal agents empirically if there is obviously risk for MDR, such as in, uh, prior use of antibiotics in 90 days? So that's the thing that I want you to uh, remember uh, uh, for empiric use, which I think we are doing it anyways. Mm. Yes, sir. What's our biogram? Uh, we, we are uh, a good center uh, uh, in terms of colonization. So we are, that's when I think uh, Dr. Bruno sits in there, so he's aware. Uh, uh, whereas our uh, uh, MDR rates are, uh, MDR rates uh, 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 relatively, uh, uh, are, they are a little, little bit over 10%. So Should we start thinking of low coverage then? Uh, unless they are shocky. So uh, I'll, that's what I'm, uh, I'm uh, describing is. Despite that, despite all what they're describing, what they're saying at the end of the game, uh, 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 they don't want you to use dual coverage for pseudomonas because the evidence is so weak uh, at this point of time. Mm. So systemic reviews of 41 trials that compared monotherapy to combination therapy reported no mortality benefit. Um, 
That's five randomized control uh, 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 trials uh, found similar outcomes with manotherapy uh, versus combination therapy in terms of clinical treatment success, microbiological treatment success, ICU and hospital length of stay and mortality. So it really didn't matter significantly. Uh, 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 but the problem is there are several limitations of some of these studies. The trials were all unblinded. Mm, trials were enrolled uh, hap -hap due to any pathogen. Uh, 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 only 6 to 23 percent were truly related to pseudomonas in different trials. Most trials were conducted a long time ago. A decade ago. A prevalence of multi uh, uh, are difficult to treat organism at low in majority of the studies. So, so we don't know. We don't know. So generally speaking, if the patient is very shocky and you're suspecting a gram-negative MDRO, uh, you want to cover for pseudomonas, you may in introduce aminoglycosides along with that. So that is the message uh, that they are trying to, uh, 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 trying to say. So dual coverage has very weak evidence. The so IDSA panel noted uh, that the evidence is very weak for combination therapy, uh, and uh, they have two observation studies. We talked about it, um, uh, and uh, really uh, the evidence to support dual coverage is weak. And consider reserving for high-risk MDROs. And decision to use dual coverage should still cons uh, consider clinical status of the patient. So shock. Uh, so otherwise, try not to use dual coverage. Is the message. So, uh, so generally speaking, how do you uh, recommend empiric antibiotic? What is different compared to before uh, uh, is that uh, if you, uh, if if the patient has HAP, forget BAP, if the patient has uh, 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 this one, I think is uh, HAP. Um, uh, 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 if the patient has HAP, and if you're t if if you think in that unit the risk of uh, MRSA colonization, like floor, for example, is low mm, and stuff like that, uh, uh, you don't necessarily, they want you to think MSSA treatment originally. So so that's why they wanted to use just Cetopy, which has MSSA coverage, mm, uh, or Piptase, which has MSSA coverage. We don't use quinolones. Quinolones, please forget quinolones as an, uh, as an agent in the hospital. We do not want to use quinolones in the hospital unless we have no choice. We do not want, it's, you develop resistance so fast. Uh, 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 we do not want to use quinolones. So don't even, uh, just forget quinolones from your armamentory. Just forget about it. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. So, uh, uh, beta where Piptazo or Cefepine seems uh, pretty decent. Occasionally, we go higher level based on risk factors, known colonization of the MDROs. We may go to imipenem or miropenem. And that all has MSSA activity uh, uh, and stuff like that. So, that's what they are, uh, they are asking you to do. But if you have a likelihood of MRSA based on your risk factor guidelines, uh, then you add vancomycin or linacelate. What is interesting is that uh, either one has equal benefit, vancomycin or linacelid. So linacelid is not considered necessarily superior uh, in terms of overall uh, uh, benefit. So they give equal uh, 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 credence to vancomycin and uh, uh, linacelid. Mm, uh, uh, and uh, the last... Uh, uh, the last column is in case they are shocky or something, then they use the aminoglycoside additionally uh, along, with the, uh, uh, along with the other agents. Linacelid and vancomycin, there's no benefit. I mean, there's no superiority. Correct. Correct. Based on, uh, seems like, seems like uh, in the, if you look at, uh, I forget the name of the study, was it Zephyr? Zephyr, is it Zephyr study? Okay, so it seems like it seemed to do a little bit better uh, uh, in the, this one, but when they looked at multiple uh, uh, experience, it really didn't matter whether what you use. And they had, uh, see, ultimately what matters is uh, you can have a lot of uh, biological studies done, but clinical outcomes is what matters ultimately and really didn't matter. They didn't impact clinical outcome uh, one way or the other. So they give equal, you can use either or. Obviously, here we have renal status or whatever we use, lanazolib, and so, so the, we, so nothing. Well, so what we are doing uh, reasonably is still acceptable. Uh, uh, so uh, when do you uh, uh, cover, as, uh, if you have prior use of antibiotics, then you cover uh, 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 this one. What they're saying is the same thing, same thing uh, uh, for a staff. Uh, staph infection, the same thing. Uh, 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 for gram negative, the anti activity, they, uh, they, they do include quinolones, but I, we would prefer to, to avoid it. If you have resistant organisms, they want you to think about, uh, uh, mm, they want you to think about uh, other organisms in combination therapy, uh, polymyxins in combination uh, therapy at this point of time. Mm, so th this is the key. Like, uh, this is another key statement, mm, uh, is duration of treatment. Uh, traditionally, we always said two weeks. Why would we come up with two weeks? Nobody knows, you know, but that's what we've done. Mm, traditionally, uh, uh, longer duration of uh, treatment preferred for non-fermenting gram-negative bacilli, example, pseudomonas. Mm, but uh, for patients with uh, new guideline states, the recommended uh, course for doesn't matter what MDRO you have, doesn't matter what you have, recommended course is seven-day course of antimicrobial therapy uh, uh, is equally good as a longer duration. Mm, so in some instances, 
uh, uh, because there is still more increased secretions at the end of seven days uh, uh, and patients still running a little bit of fever or elevated Vicona, things are not completely better. You may want to extend a little longer and you can always, based on a clinical setting, decide when to stop. But otherwise, seven days seem to do pretty well. Mm, uh, uh, and how, well, the evidence for that is there's at least two systemic reviews of uh, uh, randomized control trials that compared short course, seven to eight days versus long course, 10 to 15 days, mm, uh, antibiotics and VAP and found reduced recurrent VAP uh, due to MDR pathogens and increased antibiotic-free days. And there was no difference in mortality, recurrent pneumonia, treatment failure, length of stay of mechanical ventilation. But if they, when, in one review, when they did subgroup analysis, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, certain organisms such as Pseudomonas acinetobacter, short courses seem to show some recurrence, but IDSA did a re-review of the meta-analysis mm, and, uh, uh, and they found uh, that uh, it really didn't matter. There was no uh, uh, difference uh, uh, in recurrence or mortality. So, for practical purposes, seven days. What about other treatment issues? Yes, sir. Those are part of the uh, uh, that systemic review had uh, uh, had multiple randomized control studies, uh, uh, and I didn't put all of them. But uh, 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 and they yes, uh, 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 but by bottom line, uh, uh, bottom line, uh, uh, the overall thing seemed to be irrespective of the organism, irrespective of the organism, seven days seem to do pretty good. Uh, seven days seem to uh, uh, do uh, pretty well. Um, so, uh, this is interesting, uh, uh, but the evidence for uh, some of these uh, statements are weak. Uh, uh, so, what they are saying, this, this we do it all the time, uh, and it's very, uh, uh, very important. We, they want you to avoid antibiotic use for uh, uh, vent, uh, ventilator-associated tracheitis, uh, uh, tracheitis, because we have no evidence of pneumonia, the patient has a little bit of fever, uh, and uh, has in slight increased secretions, we culture it, and we are growing an organism, what are you going to do? Uh, 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 clinically, otherwise uh, stable, so we throw antibiotics at the patient. But what they're saying is, just do pulmonary toileting and try to avoid antibiotic use is what they're saying, but the evidence for that is weak at this point of time. So, uh, 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 but uh, the recommendation seems to be, don't do it. Mm, for documented MRSA uh, uh, infection, uh, 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 IV vancomycin and lanacinid have similar benefit, and uh, that seems to be based on uh, decent studies. So when do you do inhaled antibiotics, like such as cholesterol and aminoglycosides, as an adjunct? Uh, they are asking you to use inhaled antibiotics only, only in combination with systemic antibiotics. Uh, uh, in patients with documented multidegressant organism, uh, they want you to use in combination. They don't want to use isolated uh, uh, inhaled. This is treatment, obviously, not for we are not talking about prophylaxis and cystic fibrosis, that kind of stuff. This is treatment. Mm, uh, and the key, this is the most important one where uh, uh, they said is you suspect uh, uh, a WAP in clinical setting and you did an a, 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 a endotracheal culture or a, a bronch culture, whatever you did, and it did not grow anything. They want you to de-escalate and stop. Or you identified a specific organism, they want you to focus and uh, finish off seven days. That's it. They don't want you to go beyond that. So that is something they uh, insist on. They, that they have pretty higher evidence. Very strong recommendation for that. And PCT may be used to discontinue antibiotics, except uh, if you're already going to treat them for seven days, you cannot say, oh, I'll check PCT and then stop at seven days. No, that's not what they're using it for. They want to use PCT early in the game if you want. If you have a negative PCT, uh, you, you want to use to consider the stopping antibiotics, you may want to consider that. That's the only re, uh, only role for PCT in VAP and HCAP. Otherwise, as we discussed earlier, uh, uh, it is not a very sensitive test uh, uh, at this point of time. So, summary, uh, HCAP has been removed. Uh, 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 however, some individual criteria, still uh, 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 valid risk factors for MDROs are there. Uh, so, when based on particularly prior, particularly prior exposure to antibiotics in the past 90 days. Uh, and uh, and that will come in the new guidelines. And the diagnosis is shifting towards greater reliance on clinical criteria due to poor performance characteristic or lack of clinical difference in emerging clinical biomarkers. Mm, and the evidence to support dual pseudomonal coverage is very weak. Mm, consider reserving for high-risk MDROs. Decision to use dual coverage should uh, uh, still be considered based on the clinical status of the patient. The recommended duration of treatment no longer specific to type of pathogen or virulence, but set as seven days for all HAP and VAP. 
uh, extended duration may be warranted uh, and should take into account on patient's clinical status. So on a given patient, you may decide to extend it for a little longer based on swim, but generally speaking, try to avoid antibiotics beyond seven days. Antibiotic regimen should be tailored using the local antibiotic resistant data. Um, and all hospitals are recommended to routinely generate and distribute local antibiograms, especially for ICUs. Antibiotic dosing, uh, dosing should be based on a pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic data when available rather than manufacturer recommendations. So that's it. That's the current guidelines. Question, Dr. Ramesh. On those patients that you alluded to, where you know, after seven days, the water is still high, maybe low grade temperature. Uh, so if you want to extend the antibiotics, you know, is, is there any guide to us that you should extend it for 14 days? Nobody, no, no, no. What they're saying, what they're saying there is, what they're saying is, you go clinically, the, as soon as the patient starts feeling better, why can't improve and they're doing well? They want you to stop antibiotics because you've given a certain length of time. Uh, they want you to stop antibiotics as soon as the patient gets better. As soon as the patient gets better. So if that may be two days extension, three days extension, four days extension, not 14 days extension. My other question is in terms of pseudomonas coverage. Patients were shocking. Uh, and I mean, it's weak, but we're encouraged to do it. I would do it. Dual I would do it. I would always do it. So is it wrong if we just throw meropenem there and forget as you said as a Unless you know the patient has documented documented uh, uh, drug resistance in the past, if, uh, if you don't know. So uh, just bro uh, broadening randomly to uh, meropenem may not be the answer. Just dual coverage is different. Dual coverage is beta-lactam plus an aminoglycoside. That's what they're asking for dual coverage. Uh, there you're throwing uh, the aminoglycoside because aminoglycoside is a sidal drug. Mm, and if there is any bloodstream infection, uh, uh, it doesn't penetrate well into the lungs, but if there's any bloodstream infection, it, it reduces the LPS endotoxin significantly because uh, it prevents further growth of the organism. So, so, so that's why we want to use some of this. In terms of pseudomonas, is there any advantage of dual versus just marrow pen? Good, good question. So, uh, so once you identify the pathogen, there is no advantage to use dual coverage. Once you identify the pattern that they mentioned, I didn't have time because the, pay, the guideline is 55 pages long. And there's so many other nuances to it, I didn't put all, the, all, all in there. Uh, 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 if you have documented pseudomonas pathogen, there is no benefit of dual coverage. Single coverage seems to do equally well like dual coverage once you have an identified documented pathogen, uh, pseudomonas. So uh, uh, let's say uh, 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 I uh, uh, assume I'm not a healthcare worker. Uh, I'm just an outsider, and I come in with shock, and and I have a coming to quite pneumonia. Uh, uh, I shouldn't be getting it, but let's assume I'm a smoker or whatever, you know. Uh, and I got coming to quite pneumonia. I come in with uh, a shock. Then you will treat coming to quite pathway because uh, step pneumo can cause shock. Uh, right, so so you go ask go go for the history. You go for what what is known, uh, and so if you don't know, it, sometimes it's different. You don't know the story because the patient no no response. We can't get this one. But once you know the story, you still go with uh, uh, conventional management because it doesn't make a difference uh, uh, whether you go abroad. The problem there, I'll tell you why the problem is. Problem there is frequently, frequently uh, we may think coming to quiet uh, uh, as the problem, but the patient is shocky, and we throw uh, uh, this one. The patient actually has Legionella, and we may have forgotten Legionella coverage uh, because we th threw H, the or original H cap therapy, mm, uh, uh, and so forth. So that uh, that would matter. And Legionella is this one of the probably the second most common pathogen uh, when it comes to coming to quiet pneumonia. They don't define it. That's what they, they don't define it at this point of time very clearly. So they, it's just antibiotic exposure, but any, yeah, for any reason, any condition. So you do still have, if you look at the guidelines, it still gives you leverage. I mean, this is not written in stone. This is not dictum. Uh, uh, you know, we still do 
patients on a given day, we change things and do things our own way. Uh, uh, this one, but this sort of gives a reasonable guidance uh, so we can at least preserve antibiotics because uh, the problem right now is uh, 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 like my, my uh, uh, we, are, we are getting there, uh, we are getting there, uh, uh, like I come from India, 60% uh, uh, to 70% of patients walking into the hospital, walking into the hospital, their gram-negative resistant rates, they are 60 to 70% is ESBL, walking into the hospital. 35% in certain centers is CRE, walking into the hospital. They didn't acquire in the hospital, they are already in the community, 35%. So, it's, uh, so that is already coming here. So we have a NCR1 uh, gene uh, isolated completely, totally drug resistant gram negatives. So it is coming here. So we all have to be stewards to help out. So uh, 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 and uh, we have to work together to uh, do things correctly uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, so sometimes we want to give change a try, see what happens. You know, because unfortunately, because you guys are on the front line and you're always, uh, you want to do things quickly because you don't want the patient to go downhill. Uh, so it's understandable, uh, but we want to uh, try to change it slightly, see what happens. It's a tough, tough idea. I mean, uh, I'm not a uh, uh, critical care guy, so uh, 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 so it's it's hard, but... Uh. Hopefully Trump doesn't ban uh, uh, <laughs> coming here. But my, my, my follow-up question is... Um, if he knows this information, he will do yeah, it. <laughs> so, we always get this shocking patient who is... Uh, you want to cover with gram negative, and uh, there's a history of... Uh, and now... You know, if we want to do a coverage, that person would a stereonam and jet be sufficient? Or it's a bad, it's a reasonably bad choice. Uh, 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 reasonable choice, but it's a still a bad choice. Uh, sorry, uh, that's what I was trying to say. Reasonable choice, but a bad choice. Why? Because the half of your gram negatives, if you look at your anagrams, there is significant resistance to a stereonam. That's number one. But that besides the point. Uh, 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 the uh, stereonam has no gram positive activity. In cefepime, you're covering oral flora, the, all the gram positive agents, uh, strep pneumo, everything. But you have zero, zero. Unless you have documented gram negatives, then it makes sense. Uh, otherwise, a strenum plus gent has zero gram positive activity. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the gram positive is covered already, but we want to cover them for both No, no, the, the gram positive will be covered. I'll tell you what you'll cover with gram positive generally, right? We're not looking at uh, a MRSA. We're looking at other gram positives sometimes, in uh, this one which we fail to cover a lot of times. Uh, 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 is you'll do vancomycin. And vancomycin is a very poor agent when it comes to MSSA. Vancomycin is a very poor agent when it comes to strep. Uh, uh, so it's very slow. It's good, but I mean, it, it, it covers it, but it's slow. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So you, here you go, you're a sick patient, and, and stuff like that. So that is where astrinam uh, and gen combo is a very inferior combo because it has no gram. So you want to know what you're dealing with, and if you're still happy, then you're, you're oh, absolutely, you, you can what do it. Negative no, no, if you, if you have documented pseudomonas, I have no problem, right? You know, then a straight ampli gram negative. For empiric treatment of a shocking patient. Oh, for empiric treatment of a shocking patient, depends. If there's no prior history of uh, uh, resistant related issues, I would just do cefepime and add a uh, amino glycoside to it. What if they have allergies? The allergies, then we'll have to do alternatives, such as, uh, like, uh, if the allergy is true, the allergy is really true, uh, and then we go to estrinam because that's the only different uh, uh, drug that we have. So, as you know, plus still do amino glycosides at this uh, point of time. Then consider alternative uh, 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 gram pass to cover if you're still suspicious of that, such as lanazil there. Lanazil is a little bit better drug in that sense compared to, say, vancomycin for strep species and MSSA, for example. Why did the IDSA guideline recommend imipenem for MSSA coverage? It does have activity. It does have activity. Uh, that's why they want uh, 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 this one. We just don't use it traditionally because it's too broad. antibiotics are being used subsequently after this lecture. Okay. So Bruno's in chat, so okay, he will, uh, he will uh, keep a tab of everything. <laughs> we did. Uh, I think, I think uh, you I came in the beginning. We mentioned quite, quite. The problem is that the sensitivity for ruling in disease, they don't want to use procalcitonin. For ruling out disease, they want to use it for stopping. Uh, uh,